a bicycle bell that you can lock out. What is this all about? <laughs> In this video, I'm going to review the Timber Bell, an interesting take on a bike bell that's meant to constantly ring while you're riding, but you can also lock it out uh, with this little nifty lever here. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers, and if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, gravel exploring, bike touring, the supple life, if you have found your people, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Aloha! You might have noticed the change in clothing. It's finally warmer weather here in Missoula. I think this summer I'm going to be rocking the gravel casual look, if you will. So anyways, on to the bell. A big shout out to the uh, YouTube channel Ride Alongside, where I first learned about the bell, watched his review. You should definitely check out his channel if you're into bike packing and bike touring. Great stuff, really informative, really chill guy. After watching his review, got me really intrigued and I had to try it out myself. Really simply put, the Timber Bell is a bicycle bell that works a little bit differently from other bells you might have used. Instead of a striker that you actuate manually, the Timber Bell constantly kind of jangles and rings. <laughs> Uh, letting other trail users, other uh, people on the path and wildlife know that you are there. And it does this with a three position switch. Uh, at the topmost position, it locks the striker in there. And then you've got two other positions. This is what it sounds like in the middle position. This is what it sounds like in the most open position, if you will. So I don't know if you guys can hear it to my ears, you know, like literally right by my ear, it does sound a little bit louder, a little bit fuller in the wide open position. Uh, I actually don't know why you'd use the middle position. I think they, they could have gone with just the locked out and the fully open uh, position on the bell. There are two versions. There is this version, which uh, uses an elastic band uh, that holds it onto your handlebar. And there is also a bolt-on version if you want something more permanent. The bolt-on version is a little interesting because it doesn't have a hinged clamp. Instead, you kind of have to pry the plastic over uh, your handlebars and snap it on. I've done this a couple times with handlebars that are 31.8 and it does work, you know, as long as you're gentle. I don't know if this is how it's intended to be put on, but certainly easier than undoing all your bar tape and all that stuff. I wouldn't do this too frequently. So if you do have one bike you think that it's gonna live on, then the bolt-on version is for you. But if you foresee yourself moving uh, the bell from bike to bike to bike, then the version with the elastic um, silicone band is, is a better one to get. It's kind of a bummer with the bolt-on version. I feel like a simple clamp would have made it more usable, but what can you do? So why would you choose this bell over a bell with a traditional striker? I think if you ride trails or a path where there is constantly uh, streams of people, uh, it becomes a little tiring to be constantly ringing the bell. So in some ways this is better because it's just kind of omnipresent and lets people know from a distance as you approach them that you are there. The sound of the bell is also really interesting. It's a lot more gentle. It actually sounds more like a wind chime. than a bicycle bell. So compared to a traditional bike bell, it's more of a gentle reminder that you're in the area rather than a real aggressive ding ding, you know, I'm coming up behind you. This could be good or this could be bad. I think sometimes you do need that aggressive striker bell, but uh, for a lot of instances, I think this is actually the better bell because it just sounds like a friendly reminder. Another instance where a bell like this would come in quite handy is if you're touring in the backcountry with lots of bears and wildlife and instead of constantly shouting hey bear or you know playing a loud speaker a bell like this basically acts like a bear bell constantly laying the wildlife around you know that you're present and uh, kind of min minimizes the chance of spooking an animal i know for some of you this is not a concern but here in uh, missoula we actually have a neighborhood facebook group that gives the like weekly wildlife update about which neighborhoods have had bear problems with bears going inside their house or taking out their garbage or what the local wolf is doing in the wilderness area not too far from our apartment. So for us, it makes sense. It was actually a unintended uh, benefit when I got this bell. I was riding around with it and I was thinking, hey, you know what, this is actually perfect uh, for bike touring and bike packing in Montana or areas uh, where there is a lot of bear activity. So with my time with the bell, I've ridden on different surfaces uh, from paved road, to paved trails, to fire roads, to some single track. And overall, I'm pretty stoked on the bell. I mean, it does work better in rougher terrain. I do think this is mostly optimized uh, for riding on single track or really rocky roads where you're constantly hitting bumps that will activate the bell. 
If your path is really smooth, I found that if you grab the handlebars and give it a quick jiggle like this, you can actuate the bell intentionally, letting people uh, aware of your presence. In those uses, it's not the loudest bell. Uh, something like the Spur Cycles has a really distinct and crisp sound that will cut through a lot of the noise. Uh, something like this, the people around you have to be somewhat aware. It's not gonna cut through someone's earbuds, but generally I would say about 70% of the time on a paved MUP, it seems to work okay but it does truly excel on rougher uh, paths where you might be encountering hikers or other mountain bikers or other riders on the trail. So what do I like and dislike about it? Uh, I love that it is a more friendly sounding bell, uh, a little bit less aggressive, won't spook people. Just kind of a gentle nudge that you're there. I love that if you take this into the backcountry, it will let wildlife know that you're there so you don't accidentally, you know, spook a deer that runs into you or a bear because bears. And lastly, one other thing that I found that I actually really liked about this bell is just the sound that it makes. You know, I put on my bike, was riding, and it kind of sounds like a wind chime. And there is just something so soothing and calming about that sound that it's actually kind of fun to ride with. And I don't think I could say that with any other bell. Even the Spur Cycles bell, I love the sound. It's very effective, but it's not very calming. And this bell just has, you know, it's, it's just nice. It's a nice bell. <laughs> What don't I like about this bell? Well, like I mentioned, it's not the loudest bell. So in urban environments, you're gonna have a little tougher time cutting through the noise. But if you're out on a trail in the wilderness where there's not a lot of competing ambient sound, then this bell does work fairly well. Another thing I don't like is the bolt-on version of the bell. I wish that it had a hinge clamp, uh, but it, unfortunately it doesn't. And you can snap it on and off handlebars. Apparently, I don't know how many times you can do this, before you stress the plastic and it finally breaks. But that would be probably my biggest complaint about the design of the bell. So have any of you guys used the timber bell? What do you guys think? Is a lockable bell kind of a gimmick? Is it something you'd like to use? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like content like this, consider supporting the channel by buying a patch or a pin. And as always, keep the supple side down.